remember neuroplasticity is good. Neuroplasticity is bad. It, it wires in traumas. It's mm -hmm. what allows you to unwire traumas. Y you asked about couples and um, destructive patterns or people who are in destructive patterns of relating. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be very honest with you. When my guy friends are like, I'm dating this girl, she's a fucking psycho. I'm like, you love it. You love it. And right. you know you love it because it's unpredictable and it's surprising and you're getting all this dopamine from the fact that you never know where she is and she cheated on you or whatever. Right. You know. Their dopamine is wired for, well, let me um, try and explain this um, from a slightly different perspective. So um, he's not the favorite of, of most people. Um, but I, I'm a big fan. So Freud had a word for what you describe. It's called the repetition compulsion. Mm. So Freud's assessment was that when we experience something traumatic early in childhood or any time in childhood, that we recreate patterns that will bring us back into that experience as a way to try and solve that, to to react yeah. to it differently. Because, you know, it is true that, a, you know, a 25-year-old will react very differently to this the same traumatic experience relived as a 25-year-old than a five-year-old, right? Mm -hmm. They just have a capacity that a five-year-old doesn't have. That was mm -hmm. Freud's assessment. What's true neurobiologically, what we can say for sure neurobiologically, is that the brain circuits, the connections in the brain and the brain areas that are responsible for infant parent attachment mm -hmm. are not discarded when we hit age 25. It's not right. like, oh, I don't need my mom and my dad anymore, so I'm going to just get rid of that brain area. Right. Those brain areas are used for attachment in romantic relationships. Now that gets a little eerie to people because no, they're like, like, "Oh, it sounds very Oedipal, Electra complex, right?" No, when but you realize if you really think you throw away real estate in the brain, you're like, "Oh, don't need that anymore." That that's not like the the kid's toy room that then you graduate to college and you go off to a dorm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. That neural real estate is reused. So, so are we just trying to uh, f uh, pattern recognition? Are we trying to recreate patterns or find comfortable patterns of like, you know, I used to do this joke about like every time we meet someone, we're like, mama, dad, dad. Like, I mean, just all the time. The, are you my mother? When you're dating. Facebook? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think there are elements of that. I mean, some people react to their upbringing by looking for people that are the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to use a, an example that at first might seem a little odd. And this isn't I want to be really clear is not an attempt to bring things into um, a kind of salacious or um, or sexual discussion, but there, I, I want mean, to talk. You're in the right place if you. Do. Well, I, I want to talk about it from the bio biological standpoint. I'm so, just trying to not get you fired. I'm trying to restrain myself. Well, I mean, I, I'm happy to talk about the biology as, as we understand it. I'm, and I'm, you know, I don't know everything, so I'm going to make mistakes as I, as I talk. I, I, I do I hope so I don't. Good. I'll fill not, in any blanks that you don't know. <laughs> let's talk about some biological hardwiring as it relates to mate choice. Let's pick the most, let's pick the one that everyone agrees on. Can I, can I, uh, can you quiz me? Uh, sure. Although I'm not sure you want me to quiz you on this one. Because <laughs> what, what I'm about what is to the most important thing? What's the most important thing in terms of mate choice? Is this a trick question? No. Smell? It's pretty good. You're impressed. Um, Admit it. Smell might play a role in it, but what, what's, the, what's mother nature's punishment? Mother nature punishes this behavior very severely. Incest. Yes, which is why when someone smells bad, it means you're related to them in some way, right? So incest is not good. Uh, the, Don't everyone, do it. everyone agrees that incest is bad, and not there's ideal. a biological penalty for incest that leads to offspring, right. leads to mutations that are less vigorous. Yes, mating with close of kin in yes. any animal, but in particular in humans is very bad yep. for the offspring. Right. So there's that means that th that's the most hardwired example I can give of bad mate choice. Right. That literally means that there's a punishment for mating with close of kin. Mm -hmm. You have to talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to process that. <laughs> so that means there's a genetic there's a genetic penalty. Yeah. Okay. If you give a hundred mice choice of uh, sorry, you give one mouse a choice of a hundred mice as a mate. Uh huh opposite sex mate, they will pick the one that has the immune composition that is furthest from their own mm -hmm. without realizing why they do it. But is it from smell? It's from smell. Okay. It's through what are called pheromones. So hormones are things that are secreted in our body, right. act on other tissues in our body. Mm -hmm. Pheromones are things that are secreted by one member of a species, mm -hmm. act on other members of a species. Mm -hmm. Or it can be across species, but generally. So like, pay attention to what someone smells like. Well, the... Some of these studies have been controversial, and this, um, but there are some solid data that show that if he, women in particular, if they are given, say, 50 T-shirts to smell, yeah. and all of these have been washed in the same 
washer with soap and all that mm. stuff, they can pick out their significant other's shirt mm -hmm. with a high degree of specificity, meaning much better than chance. Okay. So that's pheromones in action. Mm -hmm. Synchronization of menstrual cycles amongst women that are group housed. Mm -hmm. Sounds like animals, but group, you know what I right, mean? Right, right. There's some data now that say that might not be as strong effect as, as once was thought, but most women will tell you it's a pretty strong effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Things like that. So mate choice on the extreme is like incest is bad. All right. Then you think, okay, well, what makes somebody pick somebody that's not good for them psychologically? Right. So then you have to look to something that's probably more rooted in developmental upbringing. Mm. And the question is, are they template matching? Are they matching the, oh, you know, I had a, a dad that raged. And so I like men who are very aggressive and then they mm. end up in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. or, because I, because this just create, it's just a comfortable uh, sort of equilibrium of neurochemicals. That's just, I I think it boils down to the, so we have to ask ourselves, what are the chemicals and hormones of, a, of sexual attraction? Mm -hmm. And those tend to be dopamine and testosterone in men mm -hmm. and dopamine and estrogen in women. Mm -hmm. People think that estrogen is the opposite of testosterone, but actually prolactin mm -hmm. is the opposite of testosterone and estrogen in terms of its brain effects. We can get into this, but so... People are attracted to certain people because of this release of this neurochemical dopamine, which mm -hmm. makes them excited. It's the, it is the the molecule of desire. It's closely tethered to estrogen in women and to testosterone Does in men. Does adrenaline turn into dopamine? No, but adrenaline can. So this is interesting. So for some people, high levels of adrenaline mm -hmm. activate the dopamine and testosterone response. Mm -hmm. And testosterone in both men and women is responsible for libido and sort of attraction. So someone that, for some people, someone that causes you stress right. could then give you dopamine. Absolutely. So let's just, let's create a, what Einstein would have called a Gedanken experiment. It was just in our minds. This is not a laboratory experiment, but in line with this hypothesis, somebody grows up in a household where there's a lot of aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. And they swear they're never going to get involved with somebody right. who has that like hair trigger kind of aggressive behavior. Then you f they find themselves and their friends find that person in a relationship mm. with somebody who has that kind of behavior. And they feel like it's a turn on. They they're attracted to that person. It might not even be sexual excitement, but it's they're drawn to that person. Yeah, drawn. It could be that adrenaline, that whole circuit for adrenaline has been wired to recruit things like dopamine and the sexual response when they experience that kind of heightened level of activation. Yeah. There are pretty good data showing that adrenaline can trigger testosterone as long as it's not too much. Hmm. If there's too much adrenaline, then testosterone is is suppressed and makes cortisol. We make cortisol instead, rather. So you could imagine that people repeat these patterns, mm -hmm. this, what Freud would have called the repetition compulsion, on the basis of some early template that was learned, mm. not as hardwired as incest, which is absolutely categorically without question bad at a biological level, mm -hmm. right? I think Hot al almost everyone would agree that, mm. right? And the ones that wouldn't are the ones we got to be concerned about, right? Right. Is so then, uh, sorry, but no. so when people say they like crazy, like they go, oh, you know, he's crazy or she's crazy. Or pretend crazy. they don't. Or, people that are attracted to drama right. that are always with, you know, in some kind of chaos. Right. We all know those people. Right. And maybe, and that largely presumably reflects an internal chaos that they're trying to pattern match with, mm -hmm. or their life is dull and it's the one thing that takes them out of their life of dullness. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist, so I can't speculate on that. But the neurochemicals of attraction and desire are very simple. It's dopamine. We think of dopamine as the reward. People always say like sex triggers dopamine or money triggers dopamine. It's not It's not so much having sex or acquiring money. It's the pursuit of sex mm. or money. That's right. It's, it's the gambler. It's the person who's going to get high. This is where these, and now we're talking about it in a dark way, but I want to be clear. The dopamine system is one of the reasons why we evolved to leave the territories we were raised in and go find new territories mm. to build businesses to seek healthy relationships mm. to seek degrees or careers i mean it is the molecule of pursuit of anything that lies outside motivation. the boundaries of our skin motivation low dopamine low motivation low dopamine ahedonia sadness serotonin is the feel good with what you've got but the serotonin system tends to make people pretty quiescent. And so, and I know couples that are both, both very placid mm -hmm. and they seem so happy together, right? Yeah. They're not, they're, 
it, somehow they've created a bubble where the whole reward system is within that bubble. They're, they're secretly in an open relationship or <laughs> and they're bringing tea to each other. Each other. Yeah, they're, the, they're wearing horse right. masks or something. I mean, you see this stuff all over social media. The memes that you see of, or the pictures of couples together, the mm. sunsets, all that. You can think of those as very serotonin or very dopamine. The get after it Monday morning is for sharks or whatever. I see this yeah, stuff. I'm yeah, like, okay, yeah, yeah. That's all just these neurochemical, different neurochemical systems. That's right. But when people get into a pattern of pursuing things that are detrimental to their goals, like they want to raise a healthy, safe family, or they want to be in a relationship that feels nurturing and physically and emotionally safe, and they're making choices that are not in line with that. Mm -hmm. I do think it's worth looking to developmental upbringing and say, well, maybe yeah. my reward system is attached to exactly the thing that is wrong for mm. me. They need to start engaging their forebrain and acknowledge that it's going to take a while. Like I keep sabotaging myself. Right. I'm trying to just put this in like- Right. Self-sabotage. Um, people that are making poor, poor decisions and excitement and sexual arousal are closely linked. Mm -hmm. Sexual arousal and relationships, I last heard, are, are closely linked. I mm -hmm. think that's a fair and safe uh, assessment. It's not the thing that brings together two members of a species to decide to invest resources are these chemical systems. Mm. Um, other systems as well, plans and things, but at, at its core, the glue is a chemical glue. 